uh, this guide, the forum for discussing visualization guidelines. It will be presented by Alexandra Diel, uh, and she has co-authors all over Europe, well, specifically United Kingdom. And um, um, I'll let her present the paper. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my talk. And thanks for the introduction. As I said, my name is Alexandra Dill. And I will introduce you to these guys, a forum for discussing visualization guidelines. So let me start with an example. Uh, this is Tom. Tom is an analyst. He work in a, works in a bank. And his boss asked him to create some uh, visualizations, to show some KPIs. So he wonders how to do the reports. He likes pie charts. In particular, he likes 3D pie charts. But uh, a colleague of him told him <clears throat> that there might be another option that would be better to show the results to his boss. So he looked at the internet and uh, Google some, uh, some uh, advice regarding the use of a bar chart, and he found the bar chart as an option. So now he asked himself, what should I do? Should I use the 3D pie chart? Should I use the bar chart? What are the benefits, the drawbacks of using one uh, chart or visualization of the other? So he continued Googling, um, looking for uh, advices on the internet, and he found a very useful uh, source. This is from a colleague of us, uh, Eager Eyes, Robert Cosara, where the, he compares the benefits and drawbacks of uh, using a pie chart against using a bar chart. And uh, there are many other sources on internet besides books. And other practitioners like uh, Tom may want to have some advice. So wouldn't it be great to have a centralized place where uh, Tom or any other practitioner can ask questions or look for resources resources or other um, uh, discussions about these guidelines. Or in a classroom, suppose that we are in the context of a classroom, would it be great to have a place where the students can pose questions or go and look for references of previous discussions or advices, recommendations, guidelines, or as researchers. If we are uh, working in a novel approach, maybe we, we can check if there's a platform, if someone else already did some, um, has some thoughts about it. So this is the main motivation for us to create these guides. And um, this work started um, with a previous research from Min Chen uh, in his paper of 2000. 2017 uh, pathways for theoretical advances in visualization, where he defined a guideline. Basically, a guideline for us is something that helps you to define what to, to, to choose, what to avoid, what to do, but based on some wisdom, some uh, wisdom from previous experiences, knowledge, uh, etc. And examples of guidelines are, for example, Good visualization should maximize the data in ratio. But is this guideline universal? What, what is the applicability of this guideline? Or this one, don't, use, don't make users to do visual math. We have um, papers in the literature that, uh, the, from the visualization community that have some um, visual math components. But the experts found it useful, and the user feedback it was positive. So, in which, uh, which are the tasks or the context or the data in which those guidelines are applicable? The same with the information seeking mantra, which is pretty universal and, and well established. So, those are the challenges that we want to discuss in our visualization forum, discussion platform. Uh, the guidelines that are contradictory, uh, for example, the, the use of the rainbow color map or uh, maintaining a color scheme uh, for, for a visualization or the transformation, uh, the, tra yeah, the, the transformation of, of the data uh, in, in the visualization, the, the, the loss of information in 
between the visualization, etc. There are uh, guidelines that are in conflict, and, uh, and also, of course, uh, there is a lot of room to, to improve them. Therefore, uh, we, we, that's why we, want our, uh, we propose our tool. Of course, there exist uh, other platforms. There are general ones, like Quora, uh, that is basically a general discussion platform where you can find questions from nutrition, health, science, philosophy, etc. But you can also find a discussion about the bar chart versus the pie, pie, uh, bar chart. Uh, Stack Overflow is more general as well, but uh, with a direction towards over engineering and uh, research is a platform to share papers, publications, but there are some discussions going on as well there. And even Reddit has a subreddit that is data is beautiful where people exchange content, case, uh, cases, examples of visualizations that are good or not, and that there are some discussions going on there. But there is no specific discussion platform coming from the visualization community for the discussion of visualization guidelines. And this is the gap that we want to fill. So these guides is open to everybody. Everybody can go to thisguides.org and then subscribe. It's democratic because uh, they, they mod we moderate the, the forum and the moderation can come from any of you that want to participate as moderators. We have already more than 30 experts uh, subscribed and some of them are already uh, answering the questions. There are some nice very interesting discussions going on there. And it's evidence-based, and that's very important, because the answers in the forum should be sustained by um, papers, books, some uh, credible resources. Let me show you some use cases. Um, the first one is the rainbow map is still considered harmful. This is a guideline from Borland uh, et al. 2007. And there is an environmental scientist who asks, OK, he said, I'm using the rainbow color map, but I know it's not the best to use. But is there any other standard that, from the visualization community, you could recommend me that take into consideration perceptual matters? And then we got the answer from an expert, Teresa Mary Ryan. Um, she's an expert in the color theory. And uh, she provides a very Extends answer, sorry, extend, extend answer with some links to videos and even some extra wisdom, right? She said there is still much research underway in the, this community in regard to the understanding uh, of the appropriate use of the rainbow column. So, this is the kind of discussions that we encourage in the, in the forum. Other example. Don't or do replicate the real world in VR. So the, this is a, a come from a question of a PhD student who who's working in virtual environments and he wonders if it's the same virtual reality than virtual environment and if he could represent realistic objects in virtual environment. And it was very interesting because the the author of the guideline, the, the, the uh, Niklas Elkis who proposed the guideline, also participate in, the, in the, the discussion he provided. So there was a discussion there between Niklas Elkin, Benjamin Bach, Minchen, and uh, where there were questions back and forth. Uh, and uh, this, the, the, the context of the tasks and, and the applicability of the guideline was discussed. So, there are other open questions that nobody answered yet, so we invite you, all of you, to go to the visas.org and take a look at it. This one is, for example, about the data in ratio principle. And I'm sure that all of us can say something about this principle. And, uh, and when this is applicable or not. 
So is it, is it the same when the visualization is presented in paper that if we use a, a computer uh, uh, or a, a virtual environment? All in all, the outcome in the long run of these guys is a corpus of uh, structured data like tags, users, um, discussions, the, the threats, and uh, hopefully in the future, uh, the, there will be possible also to analyze the, the different behaviors, of, uh, the, the dynamics of the discussions, <coughs> and some topics will become more important than others, and that depends also on you, on your participation. So far we have visual design, and then from visual design now, this uh, virtual reality, virtual environment uh, subcategory is taking more importance, so it might be transformed to a um, category itself. And this is how the guidelines look. So, for example, a guideline, guideline A, can be uh, divided in several discussion threads, that's possible, or can be contained in one discussion thread. All of that conform confirms the evidence that we uh, want to use to ground the theory. And for that, we want to use ground the theory. Uh, ground the theory uh, poses that the, 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 theory, the theoretical framework emerges from the data, comes from um, social sciences, and for example, medicine, it is, it is used a lot. Talk about it in a second, a bit more. Uh, also, we could use visual, visualization provenance or text analysis to detect some of the uh, outcomes that I mentioned before. And at the end, in the long run, this will help to um, settle the basement of a taxonomy of guidelines and the, the relationship between them in, to, in order to, to make real this uh, theoretical framework. Right? Here's an example. So in this example, we have um, the categories, visual design, bar charts, some links, uh, tags, video <coughs> provided by the expert. And how can we use the theory here? First, by coding. So we can code the categories, the concepts, and then comparing the, the evidence. There might be some evidence that are, that are classified as visual design, but it's a false case. So there is a, a task of analyzing the results and, and the discriminating the, the, the categories that we're assigned. Until a point that the categories are saturated and also the theoretical framework is also saturated. And this is valid for a given moment in time because the theory is a dynamic theory, which makes sense because guidelines change. Guidelines are not uh, a fix it in time and space, they change and they depend on many factors. So, to conclude, future steps, we are holding a workshop at the BIS in Berlin, and the name of the workshop is BIS Guides, second workshop on the creation, creation, critique, and condition of all principles and guidelines and visualizations, and all of you are invited to submit a, a report in a theoretical analysis of our guidelines. Um, you can take a look at the web page. Alfie is here as well. <laughs> She's co organizing the workshop with me uh, and, uh, and Mena as well. And, um, and Benjamin Bach. Sorry. And um, yeah, and then we have a uh, yeah, very uh, very well known experts on the on the team, and uh, and you are also. Welcome to be an active part of Thanks. So there's some time for questions. Not all at once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I start with one. Um, so there was a recent Dutch tool, and um, uh, we also talked about guidelines, taxonomies, and all that fun stuff. And a smart person, and I don't recall the person's name, unfortunately, put a comic uh, up and three pieces. Um, the first piece were two people talking, saying, our community 
um, has n different taxonomies. We should do work to unify them and put you know the ultimate taxonomy up. The second panel was years of work and papers published. The third panel was our community has now n plus one taxonomies. Um, what uh, are you afraid to to go that route? Or um, you, you, and it was very nice that in the beginning you said you know there's lots of different web pages that give guidelines to practitioners and stuff like that. Uh, what? How do you cope with the threat that you'll be the n plus one website? Um, well, uh, to make the difference is that uh, we need you, right? We, it's based. We have already more than 30 experts, and this is a, um, an effort that comes from our community. And the idea of having the experts behind is that the answers um, will come from um, very well-known colleagues. And then in the moderations, we come also, it's coming from, from them. And, and we will also want to use it in the classrooms. That would be also a difference. So, the, there are some. There are many ways of contributing to the visualization community. There are tons of blogs that are doing really well. So what we aim is that this, uh, that you, our colleagues, um, can uh, also use this other thing, this discussion platform, as a support to the already end websites. You know, if there is a discussion about bar chart versus five charts and, and we have more than 100 options, which one the user would cho choose? Well, he can go to this centralized place and say, oh, here I have uh, this very well-known researcher um, providing this answer or this is a discussion going on from our community. It's not limited to our community, right? So everybody can participate, but we are the one who, who, who needs to moderate. Uh, this effort. This is the only way that this can be successful. If it is just an effort made by a bunch, of, three or four people, it will not be successful. Um. Yeah. Um, actually, we are also looking for something similar, but uh, uh, we are working on a biodiversity on the biodiversity users, and for them, if we will show this, they will lost because there are so many technicalities of ground theory so on they won't understand for them we have to simplify it some way so that okay they would know how they can use it in their work um, so will that so in case of open source will that be extendable uh, uh, that any community can extend that uh, based on their personal requirements uh, and uh, will that be possible with this because uh, right right that's the idea so for example now we have a, a, a Category that is virtual reality, virtual environments that is growing by themselves. And uh, we contact the, the expert. So we know who are, but everybody knows who, are, who is behind because they are all the experts from our community. And that's a good thing, the community moderate itself. So it could be one thing. So, yeah, I'm taking not a whole, a whole side, but some part of, of it and building on top of that, which is specific to that particular domain. Yeah, you can do that by so being a moderator and creating your own categories or uh, changing the categories of the discussions, for example, and uh, yeah, be a manager of that specific area. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, uh, Bob Larry from Swansea University. Mm -hmm. Is it isn't it possible for somebody to give bad advice or a bad guideline? Like, how do you handle that? Mm -hmm. Right, that's a good question. Like all of the questions, but I think that one is a little bit sensitive question. Yes, um, the moderation, we are on the moderation, and that also comes from, so far we have three or four main moderators, but we need more from each specific sub-area. And uh, so we were ensured that if there is any unprofessional a post that will be, uh, we will talk with the, the person who made the post, and if it is too bad, it will be delayed. What is a bad advice? That's a sensitive <laughs> question. I think we are not holding it through. We, I, I wouldn't say.
say there is something bad or good, but that's why we need a discussion. There will be some people who say, no, this is bad, and others will say, no, this is good. And the, the threat uh, will be democratic in such a way that uh, if there is consensus, great, and if there is no consensus, to take the information, we'll know that there is no consensus. Good answer. <laughs> All right, um, I think we should move on. Oh, there's one more question. Yeah. Okay, one more question and then we'll move on. Helwig Hauser, University of Bergen. Alexander, um, can you give us an idea how vivid the VizGuides platform has developed? I mean, uh, how much uh, life is in there now? Yeah. Uh, how many guidelines are there? How many posts are there per day? How many viewers, I mean, distinct viewers do you have? Just give us an idea how vivid the, the whole activity yes. is. So, um, we didn't start officially yet, but uh, so we started like last year contacting some few experts and then the, we published this um, short paper and a few weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, we launched an official, semi-official launch it. And so far we have more than 50, 50 uses, which is good in my opinion because it's not as you might notice, we didn't um, publish it in any list yet. We will do that. Uh, we were taking care of all sensitive stuff like the GDPR, for example, before doing that. And um, we have more than 30 experts. There are uh, 10 to, more than 10 to 15 questions. And the questions are not like every hour or per day because they, they come from people who have a specific problem. And to formulate the question is difficult. To formulate the answer as well is difficult. So the periodicity takes uh, between days and one week or even more. There are questions that are not even answered yet. So um, I think the growth is slow, but it doesn't matter as long as uh, uh, we use it. It will not be like stack overflow, never, because the kind of questions that are and the kind of answers are more complex. That's my opinion. All right, let's... But one more thing, you can t take a look at thisguys.org and the, it's, everything is public there. You don't have to log in to see the information. All right, let's thank Alexandra for this. <laughs> and by the way, Alexandra took a picture of all of you, so if you're not showing up at the <laughs> workshop, <laughs> All right, and uh, she also made little nice little postcards for you to take home with the with the address on there if you're interested. Branches and seven homesteads, okay. motels, hotels, but I've heard it said that home is where the heart is, meaning that's my little town.